Shevsky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. MTV Cribs with imagination. That's right. These are fake MTV Cribs. That's right. <laughs> HGTV had a show where they had, let's say they had like alien level technology, right? Anything your imagination could come up with. And no worries about budgets, funding, or anything like that. People could just build these crazy houses in their own dimensions. That's what this podcast is about. It's so much fun. I, I love it. And we're at 35 reviews on iTunes. Thank you, Fantasy House listeners. You guys are the freaking best. 15 more. We'll be at 50. Let's get to 50, guys. That's my call to action to y'all. Let's get to 50 reviews by July. Keep them coming, folks. Thank you guys so much for those of you that have done rating, ratings and reviews. If You've gotten us so far, and it's the bomba. La bomba. Dun, 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 dun. Guys, this podcast is brought to you by me, John Chesky, your Southern California realtor. That's right. Hit me up if you have any uh, real estate questions. If you want to buy your house or you want to sell your house, you want to figure out what buying a house is like. If you're just curious and you just have a lot of questions or you want to know if you can even get a loan, I got a great loan officer. Hit me up at fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. I would be happy to be of service to you. I love being of service. It makes me super happy. It makes me feel valuable to my culture and my society. And yeah, so anything I could do, let me know. Fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. This episode's going to be good. I'm excited for you guys. Uh, my guest today is the awesome Ron Babcock. He's a stand-up comic. He's an editor. He edits the Muppet Babies uh, cartoon. He is the. He's got a great album called This Guy. He's he's super funny. I recommend seeing him live, and I recommend listening to him right now. I just I, I love this guy. One time I was on stage doing stand-up, and he walked in, and I was like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Babcock." And I pointed to him at the back of the room, and he was like, "He just raised his hands like Tom Babcock." And that kind of solidified our friendship. Once you have an inside joke with someone, it's just like, it's just love making from there on out. So in the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. I think that that's why a lot of like you see a lot of people who are you know quote unquote rich and people are like how could he be she be unhappy and it's like because they don't there's no have, satisfaction they don't have any challenge yeah you know or, or like they need like you need daily challenges in your life that you can overcome so you could feel good about yourself oh for sure that's why if anybody's ever seen being bummed out I always recommend and this is just the thing that works for me um, I like make something like I once made a tote bag in a sewing class I swear to God that goddamn tote bag <laughs> made gave me a feeling that i hadn't had from a, a stage a show on stage in yeah. like months like the sense of completion oh yeah like you need that in your life you need to feel like you finished something because it, it just it feels really good and in comedy like yeah a joke works one night but it doesn't work another night and but that tote bag is always going to be a, a tote bag that's what we i try to tell all my fellow stand-up comics quick comedy and start making bags Yes, I mean you never bomb on stage with a tote bag, bro. <laughs> no, it, there is human primal satisfaction with those simple things. So, okay, so I, I let me ask you some of my fun questions that I, I oh, want to ask you. Please, these are fun questions that I didn't prep you for. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not even telling Ron this. Oh, I love these. Uh, these are my favorite kind. So if you could, so I mean, you seem like you have some really good value to bring to people. If you could change like one thing, if you could tell people like one thing that they could do. Because so much, if you list, like, I love listening to like self development books, right? I, oh my god, I, 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 I got that blink. shit up like like a like a spoon, right? It's yeah. delicious at times, right? It's a I, spoon and Greek yogurt, e- man. Even I, if it's the same stuff in different voices and different people's ways, it's of all the same it, shit. It's, so gr- it's, right? it's all the same shit, just a different angle looking at it, and I find it fascinating. But some of it's really so. Like I, I know my mom back in the '90s was like Tony Robbins. My mom, so funny. I don't think she followed a single thing he said, but she yeah. she loved Tony Robbins. And I felt like it's almost overwhelming because these people don't know you personally. You buy their information. You listen to their book or whatever. They don't know you personally. So they're prescribing you something. But it's like, hey, a lot of people aren't even – like my mom wasn't ready for a lot of high-level change. Mm-hmm. She needed like some like a simple thing that she could focus on for a year, just one thing, not to get overwhelmed. Yeah. Like every day, check it off. What would you give? What would you prescribe to the average Joe? I mean, I'm a big believer in the whole uh, – I read this one book called The Slight Edge. So I like to say that I've been slight edging myself a lot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you and your innuendos, just the tip and slight edging. 
Because it's like, <laughs> dude, you know, it's like making tiny little incremental yeah. changes. Yeah. Um, but if something I were to give to everybody, yeah, and that's a, and that's a big one not to prep you for, but that's kind of what the fun is for me. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's kind of an. The, the, I'm going to tell you, this is an overwhelming podcast. Like <laughs> when you told me the premise of this, I actually, for the first time ever, for a podcast. I actually got a little nervous oh, because the onus is all on the guest. And I'm like, well, what kind of house would I want to live in? Like, it forced me to answer all these right? questions. And I've been thinking, I have been, I, and I'm not even nailed down. I'm on the way in. I've been going through like variables. I'm like, well, which one do I like more? And I'm telling you, this, this fact, this fantasy house has caused me a lot of stress. So <laughs> the idea of like, what's the one thing I would say to humanity to improve their life? Yeah. Um, don't make people put people on the spot with their fantasy objects. I'm just joking. Just I, for me. I, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with something very practical. Okay. Uh, and it's something that I, started doing i do it every single day and it makes me feel like i'm in control okay flossing nice listen there have been and this is i'm not proud of this but i'm gonna be i'm gonna be straight up vulnerable and honest (laughs) with you there have been like (laughs) decades of my life where i did not floss like yeah same here i just was like why would you do that and then i you know hit my 30s uh, which is just like the land of root canals. Yeah. <laughs> and I apparently, hey, guys, just another heads up. Dental insurance is like, oh, you yeah. should do that. Yeah. Uh, although it's the rates haven't changed for 40 years. So the max payout you get on any dental insurance is only 1250 a year. <laughs> and root canals are a lot more. So last year, I put about six grand into my mouth. Yeah. Of which old fillings that I didn't, you know, that need to be replaced. It's the most boring way canals. to spend all your savings. Dude, I just wiped me out, Ugh. you know? Yeah. And, so then I had this like, so I had a gap in my tooth and I had to floss it every single day because there would be like, you know, stuff that got caught in there. Yeah. So I floss it every morning and every night because I knew if I didn't, that would turn into something and I'd have to spend another like six grand or whatever yeah. to get it your fixed. retirement savings on your teeth gaps. So I finally got my teeth fixed and then I realized though that now I have this like, now it feels weird to not floss. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I flossed at least you at least once a day mostly twice a day but it it literally feels weird because it's so ingrained into me and so what it taught me is that you can turn anything into a habit you just got to keep doing it and then you just and you need the you need to put in the motivation for the habit my motivation is not having to spend six thousand dollars on my mouth ever (laughs) again so i start (laughs) not even with a gold grill not even not even you're gonna spoil yourself i just I just want to have a nice, uh, a decent smile, not full you of like, cavities. You even said, I don't know, you subconsciously, when you when you told me about it, you smiled really nice. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> ah, the twinkle on the teeth? But I'm telling you, man, when I floss, I feel like, I mean, this is just me, but I feel like I'm, I'm like, no, I'm the decider of my fate. <laughs> That's right. Like, I'm in control. <laughs> That starts with flossing. That's the best. I, I feel the same way. I, I floss every morning. I bought I bought the toothbrush thing that has the floss uh, a thing connected to it. It's got like a little, uh, what do they call it? little um, wishbone kind of Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And that just makes it so nice mm-hmm. because then you're never wrapping around, strangling your fingers and trying to get your hands in your mouth. I got this dental lace thing. It's because I'm on such a, like, a little hippie uh, and it's in a little glass vial called dental lace it's, it's just like floss. you swallow it like a monk and then you poop it out and you're like i'm flossing my body dude <laughs> you um they have that you know they have like riffing. it's refillable so okay. you just order like the sp- you get little spools in the mail and they you know you poop it in the glass are you dry. like in a club like dollar shave club but it's, it's for your teeth but it's for floss you yeah. are yeah it's, it's like every couple months they said that's some. hilarious it's like six i don't know it's only a couple bucks <laughs> that's great dude but i love it but I, I swear uh the woman who runs the company's name i think is jody and i once messaged her about something and you ever get like a response so quick it unnerves you oh yeah like you press send and all of a sudden it's like ding it's like hey thank you for your message and you're like whoa and it was a personal response it wasn't a robot it was a person i was like no this is just a woman who's really aggressive about her si- her small business like i'm gonna- you're my only client yeah <laughs> she has one client ron how are your teeth great <laughs> What's the name of the company? Do you want you can plug them, right? It's, I think it's dentallace.com. Dental. I, I really like it. It's yeah. like it's one of those things where it's cheap enough where it's I think this year is going to be my little Christmas gift for people. Yeah. Cuz you know a yeah. little negligible like you're not going to notice the payment on it. Yeah, it's like, you know, it doesn't break the bank and but it's something nice where people are like, "Oh, cuz I'm just I'm a big hippie at heart, so I'm always like, is there a way I could do this without plastic?" Like I'm totally Oh, that for guy. sure. Yeah. Right? right? You only have to tell me one time that a turtle got a straw stuck in his nose, and I'm like, all right. I, yeah. I mean, I was never even crazy about straws, anyways, but I'm down. I'll, I'll I never sip. Used, I, I never used straws because I just didn't like drinking from them. Unless it was a milkshake. I'm not like. 
I don't know. Right? You know when you have to like reach after the straw with your mouth? It seems like, like a weird mm-hmm. it's, it's it's like a weird uh, Freudian need like I just got to yeah. suck on something yeah. right now. Like can't you just drink your drink like a real primate? Yeah, no, I, I want to suck it up. I would drink it out of the glass. Yeah. Like a man cuz I would put like a gender thing on it. I like, pour it into a dog mentioned. bowl and I drink it just to show everyone <laughs> I'm like I'm so tough I drink out of a freaking dog bowl. Yeah, I have him uh, pull a garden hose up to my mouth and I drink out of that. I'm wearing a camelback right now. Mm-hmm. That's how I well, I still have to suck it through the camelback straw, but it's not disposable. <laughs> I only drink out it's of It's in the shape of a camel's dick, so it's actually kind of kind of weird. <laughs> I I'm so manly. I only drink out of pools in uh, fatter men's belly buttons. It's, yeah, yeah. It's very costly and time. I only do it with my shirt off. That's right. I, f- I get fully naked. Like those people that get naked to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. If I need a drink, I'm like, hey, Bubba, get in here. Gotta hydrate. I pay this guy a lot to just lay down and let me pour the water into his stomach. It's really weird. Uh, if you could uh, – so, so so flossing is where, you would, where you'd have it. I like, think so. I think people's lives would be better because it would um, – when your teeth – like you don't really think about your teeth until there's something wrong with it. And it's probably one of the most annoying things that can go wrong with your body because you have to eat. And they so hurt. They really hurt. It like can when they're be, messed up. Oh, it can be excruciating. Those That nerve pain can be just terrible. So if you take the time to take care of your teeth, like not only are you saving yourself money, but like – your future you is going to be so thankful because a you're going to still have your teeth you won't have to deal with dentures and it'll be like and then once you get in the habit of it man you start to love it yeah i i I love it my wife didn't floss forever and never had any dental problems and then she eventually in her 30s had one and was like oh i look over i'm like oh you're flossing now huh Mm -hmm. oh all right because i yeah i've had to floss forever look at you giving a shit okay Welcome to flossing world <laughs> with the rest of us with our hygiene. Um, okay, one more question for you. Okay, what was your favorite thing about being a kid? Um, going to camp. Going to camp? Yeah. How come? Um, every week I would go to camp in Hickory Run State Park in Pennsylvania. It was like this week long 4-H camp, and it was it was just the happiest times of my childhood. It's crazy because looking back, I would get there on a Monday afternoon yeah. and my parents would pick me up on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. I was there for like barely over three full days and I loved it. You got to, we got to stay in these cabins um, that I found out were built by FDR during the New Deal. <laughs> so these are just like wooden cabins. There's not much going on. There's yeah. some screens. And then there was these old cots and there were these old, old, old mattresses on them. And you'd put your sleeping bag on that. And then we would sometimes we'd take the mattresses and we'd sled them down the hill. Yeah. Next, next to unit four. We would just go down the hill and you have to try and dodge trees. And like we would like play capture the flag in the dark and there'd oh. be like bonfires. And, um, you know, you'd go, you'd have fun shops. There weren't workshops, fun, fun shops. shops. Kind of like your fun questions. Mm-hmm. And then we do, I remember we did like volleyball and air rifle. We go creek stomping and like, I remember just like having so much fun and we had, you had different tribes that you were in. You could either be in, um, Iroquois. That was the cool tribe. You could be in Mohawk. That was like, kind of like the tribe for like the young kids. There was Shawnee who always tried to be cool as Iroquois, but never was. (laughs) And then there was Ottawa. And that was always like the weird kids. Uh, and the one year I was like counselor at like the Ottawa and I, you know, I was really proud that I, I got some Ottawa pride, John, yeah. going on. In oh, there. yeah. But it was like you had these weird, you know, we have to stand straight for lines and sing songs. And, and like the first day you're like, this is stupid. And then by like the end of the week, you're like in a perfect straight line oh, like yeah. shouting out all these songs. And it was just, I just admit, it was just super fun. It's super fun to like just let kids run around and be kids in the middle of the forest. Isn't it great? There's something so, so beautiful about it, that. I would like, I would be so sad when I had to leave. And like I look back on it, I was like, it was like my favorite part of the week, favorite part of the year. I love that. I only went to camp one time, you know, like in fifth or sixth grade, they like, like the classes go where in SoCal, they go for a week or whatever. So that's, mm-hmm. all, but yeah, I remember loving it. And this camp was like, you know, I worked at a summer camp, uh, a co-ed summer sleepaway after call or in, the, in college. Yeah. And that was like a camp where you had to pay like six grand. Like, you know, the kids oh, would the have parents like, are, are spending a bunch of a dough. The lakes had surf bikes. Oh, wow. Which is like a, kind of like a surfboard with a bike on top. Yeah. That oh, you, yeah. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, I didn't have any of this shit. Yeah, this is like, fancy uh, camping. Like ours was like, you know, we would have like the egg toss. Like it was like, yeah. looking back, I'm like, oh, this was the poor people camp. That's, but it was super fun. I, that's what I went to do. It was a reg- regular people camp. Yeah, and it was it was great though. I didn't go to Illuminati camp. Yeah. Right? There was no hovering. Yeah, that's right. Camp Lakota. That's, You're on blast. That's right. Is that what it was? The fancy camp? camp fancy camp. Camp yeah. Lakota? Wurtsboro, New York. Don't it make was, fun. Those people have probably run all the companies now. And they're they're all, shut off the power if you're too mean to them. They have all the camps... 
like for a lot of rich kids went. I had like um, Jimi Hendrix's cousin was one of the kids. Was Jimi Hendrix's cousin rich? Um, Did they all get some I of his? Don't know. But when you asked him how he was doing, he would reply, "I feel very blessed." <laughs> uh, and then I had like. <laughs> Like some vice president of IBM's son. Oh, uh, yeah. Like the, the manager to like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, his son Alex, oh, was yeah. one of my kids. Like we had all these like weirdly like – there's this one guy, kid. Oh, God, Dustin. He was such – he was a character. He always used to talk about his silk underwears and how good they made him feel. And <laughs> That's, uh, Keep that to yourself there, Dustin. His dad was like <laughs> – he was crazy. This kid was a lot. It was yeah. a lot of fun, but he was just a lot of energy. And his dad, I guess, owned all, a bunch of strip clubs in New York. And so on parents say he would come around with like a wad of cash. I thought you were going to say a bunch of strippers. No. Yeah, like, <laughs> all the kids are like, yeah, Mr. Fratelli's here. But he just always, he's like, you know my kid Dustin? And you're like, yeah. And he just would peel off like a 20 oh, for you. Oh, so great. And just, and he just, he just would peel off money because oh. they would like tip you. And that's how, you know, how you oh, made some of your money. Great. Tipping jobs are the best when you get treated well. Oh, it's so good. Um, all right. Well, are we doing it? Let's do it. What's Man. the geographic location of this boy's fantasy house? Uh, I thought about this for a while, but I'm going to go with like uh, kind of Big Bear style. I'm going to go with um, lake, but on top of a mountain. A lake on top of a mountain. Yeah, I like I like the idea of being kind of in a mountainous area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to toy with the idea of beach, you know, and I was like desert. No, I'm, I'm desert. Get the keep moving. <laughs> like I've lived in the desert. Yeah, it's pretty to visit for a week. It's like winter. It's nice for like a weekend. And then I'm out of there. You're done. So I'm going to go with lake on top of a mountain. I love the forest. I find it very calming. The lush trees. and Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what's it look like? Describe it to me. Um, you know, for a while I was like kind of thinking like, I, again, this is overwhelming. Yeah. This challenge. I love this. Um, because I, I can't tell you. It's the same thing as a real estate agent. I can't tell someone like what, what kind of house they want. I so, just got to be like, what's up? Like, wh- what do you want? And if they go like, I like this and this, I can put it together from there. But I have to like, I got to hear from you. Like, well, you- I, I, originally I was like, oh, maybe I should do like a tree house, like a Swiss family Robinson oh, yeah. tree house. But then I was like, oh, God, the fucking elevator is going to be so annoying. <laughs> like, you know, it's like when you go into an Airbnb loft and you're like, oh my God, a ladder to get to the bed. It's cute. And, like, but then three weeks later, you're like, this is oh, bullshit. You're kidding too. Like the first time you have to go to the bathroom at the middle of the night you're yeah. like this sucks like it's not worth yeah. the space why do they do this yeah like this- what, do you ever think what if they never inv- I, I used to think i was like what if they never invented stairs what if it was just ladders everywhere <laughs> like even even i used to think about that like things to be grateful for is like i'm glad they you invented know, stairs you know the the loft like there's also a guy who had some kind of a p funnel situation <laughs> Where he runs it down, like you know the beer bongs you used to do in college, yeah, like but it's for peeing, but it's one of those that oh, goes totally. straight to the toilet. Like you know he lives by himself, and he's just like I don't fucking nobody's nobody cares. Like he does that because I would do that just oh, to yeah. save me, just even just out the window, right? You're in the forest, right? Yeah, just, just have a pee drain, or maybe like you cut a <laughs> hole in the bottom of your mattress, and that like if you're high up, oh yeah, kind of like the the door in Game of Thrones, you know that you throw people through in the airy. I don't even know that because I haven't seen Game of Thrones, but I'm thinking of the schla- a- the schlang chair from the Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie. Yeah, Did I haven't, haven't seen that, so I don't know what? that. But- you haven't seen the Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie? No, I highly can't. recommend it. So I would do a um, kind of like a a cross between a mid century modern building and a woodsman's cottage. Oh, cool. So I like the idea of a woodsman's cottage. My favorite show is a show uh, airs on the BBC called Grand Designs, which follows love people. Love Grand Designs. Dude, it's so good, of right? Of course. It's just like, I love, first of all, I love this shit, man. All oh. this shit. Like my favorite magazine growing up was Martha Stewart Living. Like I love this shit so hard. Oh, I'm so excited. So I, I like, this is all like, like what you asked me is stuff I've already been thinking about for a long time. Oh yeah. But it, this asked me to like really solidify it. So I would do like a mid-century modern type feel house, but with the coziness of a woodsman's cottage, which the woodsman's cottage episode on Grand Designs is by far one of my favorite episodes of TV ever. I don't know if I've seen the wood, woodsman's cottage yet because Dude there's so many episodes now. Dude built a house by himself. In like a hexagonal shape, used straw bales as insulators. It took him like a year and a half. It cost him like under 20,000 pounds. And it's like he's a master craftsman. So rad. And it has that. I looked up the word. I know I'm going to mispronounce it. But it's, it's, okay. that, it's that Danish Norwegian word that means um, a mood of coziness and comfort with feelings of wellness and contentment. It's called hygge. It's H-Y-G-G-E. Okay, yeah. Hygge. And I Listeners, wa- look it up. Hygge. I want my house to have that kind of feeling of coziness, but without all like the, the tchotchke and the knickknack. Yeah. So 
kind of like the, I like the clean, sharp lines of minimalism. Yeah, but I feel like it can be a little cold sometimes. I totally agree. So, so I like to have that that Higge kind of feel where it still feels cozy. Where if you have guests, it's like they want to sit in a chair and they never want to. They get don't up. feel like they got to leave because they're in a Holocaust museum. They feel like, hey, Jesus, man, right? Right? You, you right? Just nailed it on the head, right? Yeah. I, I I agree too. I love like the that sim. Okay, cool. That's beautiful. Uh, so, what's the entrance uh, going to be like? Where do, where am I walking in? What well, are you, you going to show me? The outside of the building would be like um, <laughs> the demands are getting big. <laughs> what are you going to do? How are you going to impress me there, guy? Um, well, the thing is, I I want a house. I don't want it to be a ridiculous house. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want it to be like this weird fun house where everything is done for you. Yeah. Like, I want it to be kind of a house that that could actually exist almost um so the outside would be kind of like dark wood Mm -hmm. um kind of like that japanese blackened wood so it 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 kind of melts into the um forest Mm -hmm. so it looks like it belongs there but the one pop of color would be the door so i I love houses where the door is always a nice pop of color so it'd be like a same here kind of like a a, like a burnt umber or like a like you know, like the color of that orange construction uh, extension cord oh, in yeah. the corner. Yeah, like you know those like that kind of like something like that, like a dull kind of orange. Yeah, and then that would open up, and you would see a house that w- full of natural elements. So um, a lot of glass to let a lot of light in. Yes, but also uh, a lot of wood. So and light colored wood, kind of like that Swedish Norwegian style, all yeah. like the same color as plywood. Yeah, you know, there's there's not much. Oh yeah. Like a Keep beach house simple. in in uh, in like where is it is it Norway where they have the really cool fishing where's, yeah where's, exactly like, and they have the, the, all the beach houses have like really cool like light color wood that looks yeah, a that, lot of natural light that like blonde wood that yeah makes you, like I, you know kind of that sense when you walk into an IKEA and they're like oh this this is calming but then when you get it home you're like this isn't the same as <laughs> yeah. how they did it this is just a sticker on top of plywood yeah this is but, just 120 bucks but if you but if you actually get like real like f- clean wood like that yeah it's beautiful so you'd walk in and you'd have that you see that wood everywhere it would be open but not so expansive that it feels like you'd get tired walking across the house like yeah. i still want a very livable house for a family yeah okay so it's you so who's living there uh me uh my uh you know my girlfriend you know Soon to be yada yada. Uh, my uh, <laughs> I love for that's you, man. Yeah, yada, yada yada. Shalom. Uh, our dog and probably you know a couple of kids running around at some point, or at least space for uh, a family to grow. Yeah. Okay, so this is this kind of, this is a family residence here. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go in. Uh, where should we go in first? Living room, kitchen, bathroom. Uh, can we go in the kitchen? Yeah, we can. This okay. is your house, dog. I'm following uh, you in. I'm really excited about the kitchen. Me too. Uh, <laughs> like, I think that's going to be where we spend most of the time. I love to cook. Um, except I have a couple of devices that are going to make cooking easier. Okay. Let's... Okay. Uh, first things first is we're going to have a strainer wall. A strainer wall. Yeah. You know how like you cook pasta and you mm-hmm. put it in a little strainer bowl? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, imagine like your, your pasta's finished cooking. Yeah. You take the pot off the stove. Okay. Now imagine you have a wall and it's all just a strainer. Yeah. Right. And you just say, fuck this pasta. <laughs> and you throw the pasta against the wall. So yeah. the water goes through the holes and goes behind <laughs> it. And then the pasta just falls to like a little basket at the bottom. That's like a full, a full like yeah. a wall of basket. Yeah. Basically. Like you're just like a, like a trough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then like, and then you could just like kind of pick up the one side of it and then it just slides down. Totally. And then the, the, the trough has a little hole, so it drains, and then it slides down into your serving bowl. But how <laughs> Fuck this pasta. satisfying would it be if you can <laughs> throw, like, whatever, you're, 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 you know, boiled some, um, steamed some Brussels sprouts, and you're like, fuck these Brussels sprouts! <laughs> and it goes into the wall. Yeah. And then the, the, the water behind it, of course, would go down, and it would go through, like, charcoal filters, and yeah. then it would be, you know, gray water that would be recycled in the herb garden, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Uh, yes, sir. So, I love it. so you would also have like a um a, like a sunroom, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like this open greenhouse area that would just be full of every kind of herb you could ever need for cooking. And even if you didn't use that herb, it would just look beautiful and it would smell beautiful. Oh yeah. So you have your you know you'd have your 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 oregano, mm-hmm. right? Uh, your your basil, fresh basil, you know? fresh oregano. But then you'd also have your tarragon, which you use like. But like maybe twice a year in a yeah, mushroom soup. I was gonna say, what do you use tarragon in? Uh, I use it in mushroom soups. It kind of has like a fennel okay. kind of taste, oh, okay. almost like a black licorice okay. kind of. Got to be careful with that one. Then. Yeah, okay. it's like one of those things where it's, it's it can be even for someone like I mean I kind of like it sometimes, but I would have all the herbs there and they'd be beautiful and there'd be like a little sitting area there where you could have like your morning coffee and oh, you could just smell. sit among the herbs and that's the way you would start your day. Oh. Just yeah. looking out at the beautiful lake 
in the distance Mm -hmm. and you just would see out there and it would be this nice bright it would be um like i like a i I keep imagining a white kitchen like kind of like a lot of white backsplash tiles but i would love to have um mosaics Mm -hmm. throughout the house so anytime there was tile in in the kitchen or the bathroom there would also be like very detailed mosaics and that would be the art that that, that's so cool because sometimes when you see like a white kitchen that's just white with subway tiles behind you're like can we just throw a little bit of color in here because i feel like i'm in like a operating room in the 1920s like just give me a little bit of color and i'm not sure like if that's gonna work part of me keeps on thinking of like oh well if it's gonna be like kind of a like maybe the the kitchen should be more of the woodsman's cottage feel of just like kind of natural wood throughout. Yeah. But I thought so. I'm not. No, like, I, I like it. Or it might be like maybe like kind of more wooden kind of cabinets, and then like with the white tile. I do like bright white tiles, dude. I, I but so with that mosaic though, I feel like that's what gives that extra like where it's not just like you're not just in there going yeah. You know, maybe I want to do like a little bit, see how it feels, and then I might swap it out for like a, a dark navy tile oh you want to do a fantasy house renovations episode yeah, yeah. i mean well listen like flip f- this fantasy house listen my fantasy when i was 12 is a lot different than my fantasy now you know what Say i mean like again. fantasies change you know so they're not so i'm, I'm definitely gonna have a an option to maybe sw- switch it up see how it feels try it on for size see if it's livable okay. you know what i mean i like that but i also don't want to get too concerned on the details i think sometimes it's like you know you should just like kind of just not get so focused on if the tile is the right color it's and just like kind of just enjoy your just life. Embrace it. Yeah. yeah. Just be like, oh, that's the color it is. It's like when you get a burger at a restaurant, you're like, I wanted that burger. It's like, well, maybe try this burger. Right yeah. Now. Like maybe just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Maybe, right? uh, maybe your life is better than anyone's, like a lot of people. So just shut the fuck up. I would love mm-hmm. to have you going out to eat with me and my mom at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're not sending that back, mom, until she, you talk to Ron. Can she get a bowl to shut the fuck up, please? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I, I listen. I understand people complaining, but sometimes it's like, let's just um, let's just see. If it's, I'll, I'll be a little more grateful for what we have. Yeah. Let's just embrace what it, what actually is. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, well, I'm not saying that we don't have our problems, <laughs> but I'm saying hey, we also have some things that are kind of cool. <laughs> let's, let's, try, let's let's give those equal equal fanfare, and then we'll talk in two weeks and see if you still hate that tile color because yeah. I bet you it's gonna grow on you, mm-hmm. right? Unless you get like uh, you know neon neon pink. But I would um, also have a, uh, a chef come every single uh, Saturday, mm-hmm. and the chef would teach me to cook something that I don't know how to cook. So, like, one Saturday, we'd be like, do beignets, you know? Oh, yeah. Kind of like these, like, fried little donut things. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and, like, the next Saturday, it's like, oh, I've never done ribs before. So, we just go to, like, the little outdoor grill, you know, that's just outside, and we'd make ribs. And Does then, your chef throw those at the, at the straining wall? He goes, fucking ribs! That guy can do whatever he wants. He earned it. <laughs> Okay, you know he put his time in. He's a Michelin star chef, and he's yeah. coming to my house every Saturday. Yeah. So, but then, the, the, so my homework would be the next Saturday. I have to um, cook what he just taught me to cook. Okay, or her. Okay, why am I just making it a him? I thought maybe you had a chef in mind. I thought you were an Emerald guy, or, or you know what? You know? Like you, you, oh, maybe. Gordon Ramsay. I, mean. I do like. There's a lot of LA chefs. Yeah, Susan Fenniger. Yeah, she's an LA chef. I'd go. have her come teach me how to do stuff. Hope she's cool. Thanks. She seems cool. So. <laughs> But then next week, I would show her, like, hey, this is what I made last week. And she would try it and give me notes. And then she would show me something new. Oh, that would be great. So that would be kind of like every week I'd be up in my, my, my chef game. You like going to school. You like learning. As oh, we yeah, were talking and I'd about have, before. I'd have ever sharp knives. Knives that never need to be sharpened. They'd always be ever sharp. Is that a real thing or did you just make that up? I, no, I, that's new technology. Ever sharp. Yeah. That's a great technology. I'd have ever sharp knives. Um, and also, I'd have uh, club soda on tap. <laughs> Club soda on tap. Yeah, is that your favorite drink? Uh, it's one of them. It's like I'm a I'm a big Soda Stream guy. Yeah, I'm a big Soda Stream guy. You like, like the bubbles in the you mouth? Should, you should take your Lacroix, throw them in the damn garbage. Oh, those are disgusting. Because they're like they're fine, but they're just I such a like. Them. It's like you're paying so much money. Like just get a Soda Stream, man. It's so yeah easy, and it's like cuts down on waste, and it's like it's so damn cheap. And yeah, I, I've had mine for years, and I use it like every night, and it last forever and then when i need refill i go to bed bath and beyond i use a little five dollar off coupon there you go like, like 12 bucks so you're giving two tips to our listeners this episode. Soda. <laughs> start flossing and use a soda stream it really well, is and honestly that's what like my podcast is basically just gonna be me is just shouting about that kind it's of great stuff. Uh, no, no it's great but i swear i feel very passionate about it because i'm like it just i'm into helping people save money and also making not using as um 
much you know generating as much crap yeah i i hear you i'm sorry i had to give you a plastic water bottle with water in it that's all i that's had okay i really needed I, water i generated more crap Shit. <laughs> i used to have anxiety like when i'd be working on set when i'd be like how much paper towel are we using on this one film set times how many yeah. film sets are going on today how are we not already under a pile of junk like an idiocracy like just but, <laughs> yeah i don't know and it's one of those things where it's like but i also feel like the whole the shaming thing is like well Oh, shaming's really? awful. No, we shouldn't shame. We're all like, we're all in this together. It's like I love shaming, but I also like know that it's not that effective. Like and, it just makes you feel good, but it's dude. And, and life is this weird experience where it's like we're all we all jumped in in the middle of the game. We just got the coach just put us in. It's like you can't just blame me for all the score that's happening. It's like well, this is the this is the utensils that's, we use. This is the ball. This, this that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's it's very easy to just look at people like look what you've done. It's like a natural you know angry reaction but it's like we, we we're all part of this we got to work together fellas. i just i just know i can't wait till we're all old and then that that you know the young generation then blames us for everything like the way we blame i'll be too busy like in my the- vr chamber i'm <laughs> flying like an eagle right now and having sex with a shark so you guys can continue fucking off <laughs> blame me for whatever you want kids uh okay so what other what other room should we be uh heading to now we, got we living room we got we got we got to go to a bathroom right i gotta go I, you mind if we use the bathroom real quick all those brussels sprouts and, and ribs yeah. you just gave me i gotta go to the bathroom so bathroom is kind of going to be same mirror the, the kitchen visually and okay. the same mosaics i'm thinking the mosaics should all be ships okay like old sailing ships yeah i love that theme. i love that shit my wife won't like i want that in an actual Dude, house. My I wife's want like, that. no and i'm like i love it i'm trying to get my girlfriend to allow um to get to let me get like model sailing ships oh yeah and her grandpa has like a ton of them and she's like why do you want them i'm like i don't know it just makes what? me think of adventure why do they not like that and we do i i don't know i'm i look at it and it, i'm like it just makes me think of like adventure and exploring and i and look metaphors at it. for existence it, it's perfect it, i just think it's a nice i don't know i love it too I, my wife won't, i i tour uh like these um they're called new builds and i'll go preview like a new company that's putting up a model home and i love going to them cause it's like being on a movie set because they stage mm-hmm. these these houses perfectly exquisitely like you just walk in you're like whoa like they just feel so cool and some of my favorite rooms have been these rooms that are themed with really cool nautical knots and like ropes and like cool boat models and i tell my wife and she's like yeah, yeah. and i'm like let me just have a boat room and she's like, you're not into sailing. I was like, but I, I metaphorically, but I I'm riding be. the wave of, of existence, babe. Like, come on. Let me be a sailor in this cosmic existence. And there's, there's a great bar in downtown Los Angeles. Um, it's, it's escaping. Um, um, the name of it's escaping me. But the ceiling has all is painted with like a nautical flag motif. Oh, t- okay. Yeah. And it's pretty tight. That's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember awesome. being like, I don't know why that shit calms me, but it does. It's, it, there's something wonderful. Maybe something it. like the primitive way of communication of nautical flags and the way each one kind of means something. And you're like kind of like this visual Morse code. Yep. And you're, which I guess Morse code can be visual too. That's true. Shut up, Ron. <laughs> Sorry. You make me say, Ron shut himself up. Just let the listeners know. I did not tell my guest to shut up. Uh, so we're I in, stared him in the eyes long enough to where he told himself to shut up. So we're in the bathroom, kind of a normal bathroom, but here's the thing. There's no shower. Okay. Stinky Ron. What's up? Okay. What are you going to do? How are you going to clean me, boy? All right. So um, basically <laughs> there's a water slide. And instead of going into a shower every day, um, you go down a water slide to get clean. And then where does it drop you off? Exactly where you began. Uh, it is kind of this weird um, time. I know you said no portals. Yeah. Um, but there is a kind of a, a portal-esque situation where no matter which way you go in, you're always going downhill. And you always oh, get out weird the same way you come in. Oh, that's so cool. So that way you can go in and you come out and it's like a minute long ride, you mm-hmm. know, and it's, it's like long enough to be fun, but short enough where it's like, it'll always come, you know, it's like, it's not going to take too long yeah. and you go in and you get slathered up and it's all like, you know, hair, moisturizer, shampoo. It's all in one. <laughs> You're all done. All in one. <laughs> and there's a, there's a little rough patch you go through that exfoliates your whole body. <laughs> So that, and then you get part of the slide. Yeah, it's part of the slide. So it's like a little rough part where it's like, ooh, you know, it's not like rough, but like kind of bumpy, you know? Yeah. And then you're like, oh my God. And then you kind of like, and then you get a nice rinse and you come out and then, um, and then you can, you know, you can dry off. Oh, and, and the bathroom has, and this is the part I'm most <laughs> excited about, is there's h- like hooks everywhere. Okay. So like a lot of times I go into people's bathrooms and like, you know, like we're comedians, we're traveling, we're, we're crashing on people's couches. Oh, yeah. And he's sometimes even in hotels, they don't give you a hook. Where are you supposed to put your towel? I have a little toiletry bag and I have a little towel. Like they have maybe a hook for their stuff, but I'm like, what about a hook for my stuff? And they don't have anything. And I have to do this weird precarious thing on the vanity 
and then you know at some point like you know something falls into the toilet and then yeah. i got a de- then i got a decision to make you know yeah do i flush my comb do i want do i want that uh, expensive uh, face wash you know and yep. it's like well i gotta get it out because i can't ruin their plumbing uh, and then yep. it's like there's all these times where every time you use it you're like you're rubbing yourself this is my, with toilet water this is my piss water face wash it actually really helps exfoliate but so i want to have like just a couple of hooks for people to use so it's like actually like nice and functional yeah and then and there'll also be like a soaking tub for the days where you don't want to slide yeah you know it's you're gonna have slide days and you have soak days because it, it, it seems like it would be kind of intense at times where you're like did you go through your cleaning tube like uh I don't want to go on the cleaning tube right now. I'm kind of exhausted, but and it's a lot. Here's the cool thing about the soaking tub, right? So it's going to be on the edge. So and you can, it'll be almost like an infinity pool oh, where you already. walk into it. Yep, and it'll be heated. Love it. But uh, there'll be a wall there. But if you want, the wall can open up to the outside. Yes. Because one of my favorite things to do is um, take outdoor showers. Same here. Or uh, baths, too. Like outdoor yeah. bathing in hot water when it's cold, too. And yeah. And so you can go uh, in there for like a nice soak. Yep. You know, And if you don't want to soak, that's okay. Got a sauna right there, too. So if you don't want to – you want that dry heat, you want mm-hmm. that wet heat. But I love the idea of it opening – to the elements, you get to be outside. It's nice and cold. Yep. You know, there'll be like a little ledge so you could put like a little, you know, if you want to have a little drink, yeah. a little cocktail. I do. And, I, and do I, Ron, like, I do want a little cocktail right now. I like a nice soaking tub. No, it's not like a jacuzzi. It's just kind of like a tranquil like thing of water. Maybe we could put have a jet in if we want to have So you could fun. choose it if you want to. But I also like different seating areas. A lot of times when you go into a jacuzzi, what I hate is like you're, you, you're kind of like either – all in like or you kind of just have to sit on the edge yeah so there'd be different elements where you're seating so you can kind of like just where you just want to get your calves a little wet yeah you could go into like you know your stomach or you can do the whole like right up to your chin like i'm in it i'm soaking Mm -hmm. i love that i sleep so well after that kind of stuff oh yeah it's all about like kind of prepping yourself for sleep so that'd be the like the nice like it's a weird way to think of the bathroom as like a communal area but i think we can structure it so that you would have um i'm a big fan of poop closets personally what's a poop closet uh do you know when you go to a bathroom and people have their like commode like behind a door yeah yeah i just call them poop closets okay <laughs> i'm a real big fan of them like because i don't understand why the toilet has to be like a part of everything that else is going on with your your routine like i like giving people like absolute privacy it's like how the it's actually how the toilets are over in japan like when you go to their public restrooms the the doors like they're they're top to bottom top to bottom they should be and there's not that half inch gap in the middle so everybody looks at your shoes and they know who you are when you're walking around later why can't we engineer the last half inch i think we're supposed to be the greatest country in the world the only time we can get full privacy in this country in in a public bathroom is if we're using one on an airplane i know i know or the hard rock cafe hard rock cafes usually have full closure doors hell yeah so you could do coke and bloomingdale (laughs) i think bloomingdale's does too so you could do do coke Coke. (laughs) Oh, but so I like funny. I like that and Neiman Marcus, so you can murder a hooker. Okay, sorry, and do a little co- and do a little coke. coke. <laughs> but I like the idea of a bathroom having that kind of a you know you could go in there and you could have this like area where you can kind of I mean maybe we'll make it separate. We'll see. You know I mean I'm in the design phase right now. That's right, John. Yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of like still toying with around with a lot of ideas. All right, if you just had to pick something real quick, if your if your actual like tile guy was there right now and your uh, toilet uh, designer was there, mm-hmm. what, what colors and materials would this stuff be? Um. I'd probably do simple simple white, to be honest. Simple white. Um, but it would be... Oh, wait a second. What if we like mosaic the toilet? Yeah, red. Just did the whole thing as like one giant mosaic. Mm-hmm. A mosaic toilet. What colors is this mosaic? Almost like, like kind of like a Van Gogh starry night. Like not that, <laughs> but like kind of that like elements, like a wave. Yeah. Oh, maybe like a wave. Well, that'd be kind of cool. You got your poop closet with a wave yeah, in it. Yeah, okay. Poop closet with a wave there, in it. We could put a mosaic like of a starfish in the center, and that kind of be the part you always aim at. <laughs> well, won't you feel like you're kind of being mean to the starfish, though? You're like taking a leak. You're like, oh, fuck that starfish. Over, over time, I f- <laughs> you cut its leg off, it could grow one back. I don't feel sorry for that thing. <laughs> oh, dude. This man has no empathy for starfish or any animal that can grow back limbs. Do you know that... Um, you hear what I'm talking about, worms? Toilets aren't all the same. 
I found that out. What and, do you mean? Uh, well, I was – my sister used to live in Kyrgyzstan, mm-hmm. which is a kind of country in Central Asia, for one of the former Soviet um, Union republics before um, – Yeah, dude. Union fell I've apart. seen Borat. Yeah, yeah. So it's like right next right next to Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah. And so um, – Another Stan, eh? There's so many Stans. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. There's so, my friend Stan. He owns a vapor store. Well, this Stan had uh, toilets where when you pooped, you – they. It, it like would go on a shelf, kind of, and then when you pull the um, the string, first of all, they mostly had holes in the ground that I because I went to visit her and they had in high school. Yeah, and there was like usually holes in the ground that you'd squat over and you'd you see guys reading the newspaper they'd, as they're squatting. They'd finish off, tear it, and then they use that the paper. Oh. Yeah, that they just finished reading. At least you know everyone's getting and, the... and it's all open. Like it was weird. Like there were no doors. There were just holes, and you would all just kind of on you the road and look at each other. Yeah, it was like in a circle. That's the it exact was, opposite of those wonderful uh, poop closets we were just talking about. Yeah, and let me tell you, as a white guy, and most people, this is the first time they've ever seen like an American visiting this part of the country. They're just watching like, you shit? They're just like, well, look at this guy. And like, because like, I'm the entertainment, where yeah. I'm like shitting for the first time in a hole. And I'm just like 16. This is my first time out of the country. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to Canada. Or and like, you're 16. You know, you're not used Paris. to like just like it's not like when you're an adult. You're like I've been to the gym. You walk around naked with other dudes. Yeah, you're just 16. You're like oh, oh. doing probably one of the most embarrassing things for people to see you do. Take a poop. <laughs> yeah, I'm like borrowing fucking newspaper from the guy next to me. <laughs> it's, oh, like, it's not like they have rules there. Like, you got to kind of bring your own. <laughs> oh god. So. They like, uh, but they, the, the few toilets that I went in, there was like a shelf and you'd like, you'd, you'd go and it would just be sitting there like looking up at you and then you pull the, the like, li- like the water thing and the water would come in and like flush it away like a toy, like a dam that broke. And I just was like, there's got, there are better ways to do this. It seems like you guys are going through a lot of effort keeping the poop on the shelf. That's yeah, why th- it's just why is this so square? Like why they haven't like mastered the curves yet? Yeah. It was just like this like Soviet brutalist square oh, yeah. kind of toilet. Yeah, you know, it was it's, like adapted from something else. Like it's part of a tank, like a nineteen eighties like style toilet. Yeah, you know, we were just like, oh, it's the hard lines, and it was weird. I I would rather just poop in a hole in the ground. Uh, <laughs> once it gets too complicated, I'm like I yeah I have a guilt trip. For my poops. Uh, so now that we've talked about poops, and we've talked about bathing. Mm-hmm. We hit the kitchen. We hit we the hit bathroom. The kitchen. Living room. Any other kind of room we should check out before yeah, we go, th- go to your master bedroom? Uh, living room and, and you know would be kind of like a normal living room. Um, j- big, giant fireplace. Um, mm-hmm. I've always been a fan of those like little reading areas by a window. Uh, you know, like, like a nook that where you can sit by the window? Oh, like yeah. a nook that pushes out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you kind of feel like you're... And but like like the problem with a lot of times people put nooks is they it's either hardwood and mm-hmm. like you need cushions or it's like one cushion like I want it to actually be comfortable so there'd be like a custom kind of cushion area you know with like built in like almost like a weird little mini couch you know? yeah but, like a lazy boy parallel with the window kind of thing like yeah it's like you're you're you exactly. can lean with the window on one of your sides yeah like so you're kind of kind of yeah. lean and enjoy it there and always have a place for like a little coffee you know you, you always have a place so people can sit down and kind of nuzzle in yeah and then that's where i could like do a lot of my reading and um what would you read there um, like if we were just coming in today to do this tour, what would what would we read? Probably, I mean, I'm I'm totally like a, a self help dude. I love that shit, but I've I've been forcing myself to read a lot more uh, non um, uh, fiction, non help. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love self help, but I've been making myself uh, read a lot of non help books. Yeah, but outside help. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been doing like a lot of more uh, fiction books, and um, and, I'm for, and I'm, I, of course, I immediately like fall in love and love it, and totally get sucked in. So probably a lot of sci-fi stuff. Oh yeah, I've kind of it's been my latest kick. What's a good sci-fi? Bo- is there any good sci-fi stuff right now? I was looking on Netflix. Uh, I tried to watch like the, uh, the what is it, the Lost in Space, and I w- couldn't get into oh, it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not like a I, I don't I'm not like an expert, but I know I just read this book by called Red Rising by Pierce Brown that was like fucking bonkers. Red it's Rising, awesome. It's great. It's about this. Um, miner on Mars and he kind of just discovers that his world isn't what it seems and he, you know, takes steps to correct that situation. I don't want to give anything away, but it's like... That's it's, a good intro. It was like though. watching... It was like reading a book where you're like, God damn it, this thing just moves. Like, yeah. every, like there was just no filler, man. It's all like paid... I, was, I actually listened to the audio book and it was just like... It was so great. I yeah. like. I just enjoyed my commute so much for like three weeks. I love. I love that about audiobooks where you're like, I'm excited to get in the car. Oh, there's traffic! Yay! Mm-hmm. <laughs> get through yeah. a full two get, chapters. Get through a couple more chapters. <gasps> 
No, but living room would be like kind of chill and very nice, very welcoming. Color wise, is it still going to be like light woods and stuff like that? Light woods, but the furniture is going to have lots of color. Okay, lots oh, of pops funky, of color. Yeah. Um, a lot of lights, a lot of greenery, a lot of, a lot of plants. Yes. So I, I love when a house has is full of plants Same. and full of life. Uh, there'd be a couple like signature art pieces that would also be full of color, um, just nice and big. Um, Point one out to us and describe it. Um, this I, is for our stoned listeners. Whoa. I probably, you know, I, I'm not a, I, I want to say I probably would have like a, like, Jesus Christ, I don't know. I was thinking like a Rothko S kind of something with like kind of a color splash, but I, I kind of find those to be kind of boring sometimes. Just describe um, one to us. It doesn't right. have to be perfect. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Just, you know, it's going to be, um, it's going to be like, yeah, uh, st- uh, col- like strong lines of color, like a, a Lichtenstein. A Lichtenstein, know, or has like kind of the black and white strong lines, oh, yeah, very, with very, like very art, art uh, like like advertising art, like hot yeah, silk kind screen, of that like that pop art that's very grid like and has strong colors, like a strong navy blue, a dark like a red, a bright little yellow, and that'll be. I'm, I've always been a big fan of um of line art, of geometric kind of line art, more Arabic, where yeah. it doesn't really depict anything from our world. It's just kind of simple lines yeah and i always i don't know why I, that kind of that vector based art is always oh, yeah. kind of cool it's probably very calming oh, very cool is it framed or is it just on a canvas by itself oh just a canvas fuck frames how big is it fuck big frame fuck frames yeah, you fuck throw that frames at your for life i think frames are just a fucking <laughs> you throw pasta, way... brussels sprouts and you throw frames and stuff. i'll tell like, you fuck one frame I'll tell you one thing my fantasy house big big strainer and big frame don't have any place there okay? that's right that's right uh, it would be yeah, just on canvas, and it would be a pretty big piece. It'd be, but it'd be square. I think square pieces are always kind of cool, like a good, you know, like, like a four gym. feet by four feet. Oh yeah, that's so much, so powerful when you see them in person. Too, yeah, when you see a big painting, you're like ah, oh, it's just, it's, it's like, like, it's like I am a painting. It, really? Yeah, really. I have a painting at my house that says "Hello, I'm a painting." I love. Oh my god, I, I love the painting that, just being like, "I'm here, I'm a painting." That's great. Love me. Uh, um, I want to. I was thinking though. Um, I want to take you to my office. Please, let's go. All right, so, so what you said that was somewhat seductive, Ron. So the, you know. the office, the office isn't in the house. <laughs> okay, office is in the backyard, and it is. A, it's like a separate office. I'm a big fan of like separating your work life from your home life. I agree. I've always it's a sign of, of good like, health. Yeah, it's always just dreamed of having that space you could go to. You know, people have their little backyard offices. Yeah, but mine would be like an old um, structure, mm-hmm. and so it's repurposed. So it used to be like some weird little power station or like. It was like, uh, oh, this is the, the where we had kept the well, and so it would all be all stone, and then I would repurpose that uh, to be my office. So it'd be very cool inside because it was made of stone, yep. and it'd been there for like you know a couple hundred years, uh, and it has that. I'm a big fan of rehabilitating, like when people like yeah repurpose an old building. So like, cool. Just I, I like history, and I like that like when we don't throw like tear something down, we can reuse it. I find oh, yeah. that to be like really exciting. It's, and so it's got a story. It's got like a yeah. history and some character and you, and this it, loft used to be where they would murder, uh, conv- convicts. And you're like, Whoa, Whoa yeah, really? Can I use the bathroom? Oh, cool. Yeah. So I'd have my little writing nook out there. <laughs> it would also have a bathroom. Yeah. No shower slide. That's too much. That's, you know, you can't have two shower slides. Yeah. Come yeah. on. And then that would be like kind of my little writing area that I would go to during the day, and it'd be like a lot of nice windows, same kind of visual feel as from, but more books and more textiles around the room, a lot of plants, so a little bit more of like kind of tchotchke and coziness feel. I like kind of be surrounded by like stuff when I'm writing. Is it because you actually like you take a break every fifteen or twenty minutes, and then you touch the stuff? You're like, I'm gonna build a, like I love like the idea of Legos sitting around. Like, I'm yeah, build a little thing. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. It's something I like, kind of like. Um, I guess some people call it like distracting, but like, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, hey, if I'm not getting stuff done, I could get all this stuff out of there and make it more clean. That's know? right. That's you, the thing. You have a fantasy garage sale. It's mm-hmm. another podcast we're doing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what would you sell at your fantasy garage sale? Um, probably this like fantasy silverware set that I got as a gift. I've got this old interdimensional portal thing. No one's using it anymore. Yeah. And it's like, the, and it kind of breaks, to be honest. So like, I don't, I feel bad about selling it because I feel like <laughs> people might get lost in a portal, but I also don't want it. So. Five bucks. Yeah. I don't want to throw it away. <laughs> do you have a, a, a garage or anything like that? Um, do have a garage uh, for a car, and the driveway is one of those driveways where, uh, oh, gee, it's in the forest, so it's not really going to work. But I like when 
I love when you see driveways where like there's grass in between like the concrete slabs. Oh, yeah. So was, it just has the slabs for for their tires, but the middle is grass. Yeah, or like they're even like kind of like like a crazy geometric pattern yeah. where it's all like kind of weirdly tiled. And um, I would have a, but the thing is, I don't need the car that much because of my um, transportation system underneath the house. What's that? Oh my gosh, you're really leading us into something good. Have you ever? You remember gummy bears? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember how they got around in gummy bears with those wooden log slide systems? And they would jump in and they'd pull the crank and they would shoot down uh, the slide. Dude, I don't remember it, but I'm so excited now. It was like a wooden water slide, yeah. kind of, but they're like in a cart. And you're cavernous under the ground getting yeah. places? So, because I want to be far enough from a city where I. I feel like kind of I'm out on my own in my own little homestead, but I also want to be close enough so I could like conceivably bike to it, you know, or like, um, you know, so I, I would be able to bike to it in the way, again, it's kind of a portal thing, but it's always downhill both yep. ways, always downhill. Yep. Uh, and then um, maybe there's like one little hill in the middle just so I feel something, but pretty much all downhill. <laughs> and then, or we could take, uh, we could take our little personal kind of like uh public transit i guess private transit in this case and then you could shoot that down right into the middle of town i could get out there and i could like you know go to the coffee shop go see a movie do the shopping take the kids to the park something like that you know it's all personal though you don't have to worry about sharing it there's no there's no, no crazy I drunk mean, guy coming on it but i give people rides all the time because they think it's the coolest shit ever yeah you know? i mean that's how when you're coming over for a dinner party like i send one of those <laughs> you know and people are like god ron's house is so cool i'd be like yeah, it's really great because I love I love hosting. Yeah, it's like my favorite thing. It's it's, a, it's such a fun like pri- it's again like back to the primal. It's such a fun primal thing to host and have loved ones around and be like, "You're here with me, and I got it all covered, and you're gonna like, have a great time." Yeah, just like enjoy yourself, be comfortable. Uh, well, so where do we go next? So we you have an insane transportation system underground. Uh-huh. You have I have water slides in the bathroom. Water slide that cleans. But it's you still in the like it's all. It's not. I, I want to. I don't want a place where like. The worst thing in my life would be if I lived in a place like it was like in a Wallace and Gromit short when he wakes up like a robot dresses him. Yeah. And I would hate that. Like I, I would hate to have everything done for me. Totally. I get that since since the second we started talking like that you enjoy doing things for yourself. I you enjoy, enjoy the satisfaction of the little I things. I enjoy challenge. I yeah. enjoy work because I feel like you feel productive. So like so I would stronger and happier. And I would have to chop down my own firewood for the fireplace. Yes. And so there'd be a tree outside. Again, this is another portal thing, but um, this is like, <laughs> so I would chop down the tree <laughs> Yeah. and then the firewood would like dry in one hour mm-hmm. and I'd be able to use it. But then the next day, the tree would, would have grown back to its oh, original size. So you have ever sharp blades and you also yes. have an, an ever growing tree, tree that just yeah. keeps going. Well, it's, it's a tree and fast forward. So yeah. it's, in, it's kind of in its own little time portal. Yeah. And, but that would be my workout is I would always, so people are like, how do you say so fit? And I would be like, I chop trees. <laughs> like, cause how badass would it be like, yeah. oh, you have a bow flex? I have an axe. And then I would do, I would cut it down and then I could bring it in and use that to, to warm my family. Yeah. You You'd know, be the alpha, the alpha dad that chops his own wood. You heat your own house. Yeah. It'd be kind of, I want the house to be, you know, connected to the grid, but I also want it to be able to like be totally self-sufficient oh, on yeah. its own. So like if something were to happen to the outside world, like my lights would still go on. We could still live our life. Dude, I love that. Even if something, nothing does happen to the outside world, there's something to be said about like, well, why, why do I need to be a drag on anything else? Yeah. You know, I, why, why can't I just be like, be off the grid, like do your own thing. I talk about this Make all the time, power. but I don't understand like why the whole, that whole part of like, like solar is been like a political thing. Cause I always thought like yeah. the idea of like being on your own house to me is like, one of the like Republican ideals that like I always was like, man, that's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. just, like, t- like never have to worry about anybody. T- like, take care of your own shit. Like oh, that yeah. to me sounded. So I was always surprised that that has never been like a universal. I think it just loved. got politicized. And, yeah, and, and with identity politics, people go. I was just listening to this on uh, on a Sam Harris episode. He interviewed someone talking about this. There's a psychological thing that happens to us as humans, and we're at this point where like uh, the styles of populism, I guess. So with, when when one side likes something, even if it's uh, totally matches up with your other ideals, because the other side likes it, there's a primal like association with like, oh, it must be wrong. Uh, so like if you want like a, like Hitler tied his shoes, and you go like. Well, tying your shoes is bad then. You're like, is it bad to tie your shoes because Hitler tied his shoes? Like, yeah, because Hitler did it. There's like that on, on all the different kinds of – which is why it's good to you know, yeah, try, like, try to rise above group thought. Didn't Hitler date his cousin? You know, it's kind of like yeah, bullshit. Is that like, even wrong? Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, so now I can't date my she's cousin? She's kind of cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I definitely don't think that, that was a really weird analogy for us to make to our <laughs> listeners. You're like, use floss. <laughs> also, bring out your cousin. Dude, give your cousin a chance. All we are saying. So I think, I mean, you have to have a master bedroom. You can't skip out without taking me to your master bedroom, Ron, and then you can tell everyone well, where they funny. can find you. I didn't you. even think about the master bedroom. I thought about all the common spaces in like the office, and I didn't even think. You didn't think about a master bedroom? Okay. You and your wife are going to have to have a master bedroom. Master of bedrooms is the place where you relax. I mean, I just, to me, a bedroom is like, should be the simplest place where you just have, it's all about the bed. It's all about the bed. I mean, this, they call it the You know there's a place room. called All About the Bread, right? Oh, yeah. Great sandwiches? Yeah. This place has great mattresses. All about that bed. About same, that same bread. owner? No gluten. <laughs> He's like, I also own a mattress store. It's called All About oh. the Bed. <laughs> uh it would just be a really nice nice bed i i, I don't want a king size bed though um well, i don't know maybe as we get older we'd want one but like i like i don't like having a bed i like to be next to my partner really so you like a smaller bed well just this, I, i'm not talking twin but i'm talking queen like we have yeah. a queen now but she says she's like i totally want a king i need but a king I, I have to be able to stretch out i, I and i, I go I like sleep king. with my kids so i'm like you guys uh you know what fuck it we'll get a king by the king where our relationship is strong enough where we don't need to like sleep right next to one another you can no, this is your you fantasy can, house you can have a queen size bed in the corner for those nights hmm Ooh, maybe the bed can be like adjustable or like hey is, oh yeah maybe it could be one of those things like hey babe is it a is it a queen night <laughs> or is it a twin night you know what i'm saying and then you're like <gasps> you know you hit the button yeah and then all of a sudden it like, goes to a twin and you're like because that's our fuck bed does music play when it yeah. goes to twin oh yeah oh i forgot to tell you about my the favorite thing about the house okay let's leave this master bedroom and go to your favorite thing here we go well it's it's all throughout the house okay um there's music that plays that matches your mood nice so if you're just kind of having a feeling you're having a great day there's music that will automatically come on to match your mood how cool would that be i love that like it's like a movie sound like it's literally a movie soundtrack for your life i love just that. in the background and it could just kind of be like, hmm, yeah, I am kind of sad right now. And there's like kind of sad music playing as you wistfully look out. What would play? Give me an example. Let's paint this picture for our listeners. Oh, man. I mean, it's it's slightly drizzling. You're looking out the window. You're happy where your life ended up, but you still have regrets. There's still the times where you wish you, you, wish you said yes, you what, know? What song is that? Give me that song. Um, Nico. Uh, <laughs> Anything by Nico? <laughs> Anything by Nico? Okay. Like, like Needle in the Head. Oh, yeah. That's a heavy one. That is a heavy one. Oh, the one. These Days. Such these Days. Like, I can't. I'm a terrible okay, so, singer. So, but no, Nico These that's, Days that's, is like the This is a comedy podcast, song. Ron. You're allowed to be a terrible singer. I didn't have you on saying, this guy is going to blow you about this <laughs> singing. Uh, what, okay, let's say you're having a great day. Or you just or you want to be uplifted for a great day. <laughs> hey, now. You're there. an all <laughs> Get the game on. Go, hey. If I'm a guest there and you're like, hey, make yourself at home and I'm walking down your hallway and that's playing, I'm going to be like, shut the fuck up, house radio. <laughs> uh, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my But I would love to have like like a nice, like in the whole house. Can you imagine like nice slick hardwood floors? You're wearing socks. You could slide around oh, everywhere like you're a kid. Oh, yeah. I mean, encourage your guests to do the same. Especially Me. if I'm listening to Bob Seger, uh, uh, old time rock and roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. A lot of Bob <laughs> yeah, I love that's my favorite. Come night moves. Uh, that's that's a whole other. That's for when you guys when you go, babe. Yeah, twin bed. And it goes. Talking about the night moves. And then she just like flips the California king, and you're like, okay, all right, good night. <laughs> I love you too, babe. I want to do a reverse cowgirl while listening to Hollywood Nights. You down? Yeah, and then it switches, so the bed just turns into a bunch of gymnast bars, yeah, and it's like dude. we're getting into some weird shit tonight. Oh yeah, dude. Turn the page. <laughs> Uh, that was a Metallica version. Uh, dude, we're, that was just a hilarious house. I freaking love it. Um, I got to think, like, I, I, I guess the basement would be, like, kid stuff, like, kind of romper room, kind of kids. like. And you know what? I would be like, listen, you tell me what you want, you know? Like... Cause like you know you want you want a whole uh, a room made out of trampolines let's do that like give give them some creative it. feel like don't uh, that's this is gonna be your space so what do you want and then we'll do that I love that in your fantasy house you're like I'm gonna have to get uh, get some uh, info from my kids before we design that room yeah I mean I'm not gonna be the one who tells them like this is my, the fantasy of how you should be a child be like go oh, crazy man that's great I mean, maybe we'll have like give we'll have the one parent room so it's like you know not just like a room with like dinosaurs or some shit you talking about in the basement yeah like yeah. you know and then like. But like, yeah, you know, you want to have a house that like, I would want to like teach kids how to cook. I think it's, 
I think a lot of parents are afraid of that. I think it's cool to teach kids like how to cook. So I would want to have like a little station for them that's more kid size where they could like, you know, maybe give them like little doll knives and they could only chop garlic or something you, like that. I think that's freaking great though. The teaching that's a, such a great skill. Yeah. I didn't learn how to cook till I was way older. My Same. mom did not, does my mom still doesn't know how to cook. My dad knows how to cook, but like no one taught me and I always thought like leave that to the pros or like somebody else does that. So I think that's great. You no, teach kids I would. That. I would have like a big hosting area, like in the off the kitchen, it would just be like kind of a giant table, like a rough hewn. Yeah. Um, uh, just a giant wooden table that would just be really opening and, and welcome. And it, I envision the idea of like always having people over and having fun and kids playing. So it's like a. It's weird. It's like a quiet house when it's just us, you know. But also, it's like a house that is. You know, if you thought of it, you would think of like laughter and, and boisterousness and people having fun oh, and like great. lots of good wine and club soda on tap. Club soda on tap. Leave it at that, folks. Get this house, people. I love it, dude. Thank you so much for Is taking that a there. bonkers house compared to ones that you've done? I already? love it. Is that like a pretty like? Where dude, does this? Where does this fantasy? It's. Cr- I mean, th- this is the beauty of this show. Despite is the that- water slides yeah. and like the like you know private. Uh, gummy bears transportation network system yeah it's it could be achievable oh it's totally and and th- this is the thing it's an experiment in psychology and adults getting to get creative like as if you're a kid that's what mm. i love about this and so everyone has their different stuff and and yeah dude i've had houses that are like completely impossible and then other houses that you're like hey we could do this you take this stuff out of this though you abstract the stuff that's that is doable and you put that into your life even if it's just in your apartment right now or it's mm-hmm. in a house in the future there's stuff in there and now you, you, i mean you go ahead listen to this episode and you'll know like oh yeah i like that if you ever forget it's you, it's honestly like my dream is to build my own house with my own two it's hands so rad which i don't know how to do it's so rad well i hope that this was some some i think you, you might not know how to do it and i'm doing the air quotes but i think you do know how to do it and I think you know how to learn how to do it. I'll tell you what, man. And I hope this gets you that much closer to doing I'm gonna, it. I'm going to drop some plans, send it over, and uh, we're going to get a builder, and we're going to make this shit happen. Dude, it'd be so rad. Okay? Seriously. I, I hope that you someday do something, something with some so of this. I'm so glad that the podcast is going to pay for it. That really, right. that really means a lot. <laughs> Just put, putting a word I mean, in a, I know uh, you didn't say that, but I know like you, can tell. you would say that. You can tell. And I think that's really cool that you would think about saying that. This podcast is going to pay for your fantasy house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, you heard it here, folks. I got to get and around like, Looking house. around, I wouldn't expect that you would have the budget for something like that, but that's like really cool that you're still going to do it. That's, you talked me into it. I'm mm-hmm. into it. But yeah. guess what? I'm living there with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's just one catch. It's, it's going to be a great kids movie right now. But, dude, thank you for having me, man. Thanks for doing this. Where can people look you up? Where do you want them to find uh, you? You can find me on Instagram at, at HeyRon or go to my website, HeyRon.com. I'm on the Twitter at, at Ron Babcock. And uh, I have an album. You can listen to it um, called This Guy. Uh, and you can listen. You can buy it. Or, you know, you can just listen to it on Spotify, man. I understand. People got – you got you got a budget. Well, if you guys listen to it and then you go, I want to buy it now. Like I heard it and I want to support Ron. Do that. And we're, a lot of people listen to us, Fantasy House on Spotify. So they'll, they can let you listen oh, to dude. us. Then go search for Ron right that now. That would mean a lot. If it, you guys listen, that would mean so much. Are you, is it on iTunes also? Yeah, of course it's so, on So iTunes. it's on Apple Music or iTunes or whatever they're calling it this month. And it's on Spotify. <laughs> this is going to be on YouTube. So, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's pretty much just me talking about my Fantasy House. I feel like I... I, I go over a lot of the same the material. Album. Yeah, it's, it's it's a weird album. Oh, dude. The weird album, Yankovic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. I feel like hashtag blessed guest. It's been an awesome time, awesome journey. And uh, give us a five-star review. Hit me up if you have any real estate questions. Fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. Go visit Ron. Go see him live. Go check out heyron.com. All right, you guys. Mwah.